com computer science at its core is about algorithms. It's about problem solving and coming up with solutions to problems that we encounter in various disciplines and in various applications. The same thing with data science. It's all about coming up with solutions to data-driven problems. Solutions are usually are in the form of an algorithm. We come up with an algorithm for solving the problem. These algorithms typically take some input and they, we, we ask the algorithm to give us some output with desired property. So what is an algorithm exactly? An algorithm, in uh, one simple definition of it, it's that it's a finite sequence of precise instructions for performing a, comp uh, a computation. There are three words that I'm coloring there, finite, sequence, and precise. Finite, an algorithm has to be described in a finite amount of space and time. Nobody is interested in an algorithm that will take infinite amount of time to even type, right? So the, the algorithm itself has to be finite. The sequence, it means that it, we have an order on the, on the lines or commands or statements in the algorithm to, to execute and to perform. Precise, the instructions have to be well defined. I cannot write a line in the, algor in the algorithm that is open to interpretation, what it means, right? So if I write that in certain line, let x equal y plus 2, that's precise statement because I can take y, add 2 to it, and assign the value to x. Uh, but, but if I say let x be some y plus some number, that's not, well, that's not a precise statement because I don't know what some number means. Should it be an arbitrary number from a certain set? Should it be a random number? And, and so on. Okay? So an algorithm, the way we describe it, it's a finite sequence of precise instructions. There are desired properties of an algorithm that don't make the algorithm correct or incorrect, but they are important to have. The first one is that an algorithm must have a proper name, right? So just like when we write a function in, in any programming language that we call it cluster or multiply or divide, we know what a function named multiply, we know what that's going to do. So an algorithm must have a proper name. Most algorithms have input-output they need to be specified precisely, including the values that they take. Right? So are the in, is the input an integer? Is the input an array of real numbers? Is the input a graph? Is the input an image? And so on. The same thing with the output. The steps of an algorithm must be unambiguous. That goes back to the notion of precise instructions. So there should, be, there should not be open to interpretation. An algorithm should produce the output in a finite number of steps, and every step must take a finite amount of time. So when we run an algorithm, we don't want that algorithm to take an infinite amount of time because we want it eventually to give us an answer, right? So this is what this is saying. The final point here of property is that an algorithm should produce the correct output for every input, right? So we want the algorithm to be correct. So the fourth, the fourth uh, bullet here that says we need the algorithm to return the answer in a finite amount of time. The fifth bullet says, well, not only we want it to return it in a finite amount of time, but we also want it to return the correct answer. Now, one language we use for describing algorithm is what we call pseudo code. Pseudo code is a language that's somewhere between English and real code. And the reason we use that is because when we are describing an algorithm, we don't want to get into the gory details of the implementation in a specific programming language. But also we don't want to be using fully English uh, language where things can be ambiguous. So what's shown here, for example, is a description of an algorithm that we call linear search and written in pseudocode. So I'm going to go through this line by line to show you what the properties of this, of this algorithm are and how pseudocode describes the algorithm in, in unambiguous language that we can then turn into actual implementation in any programming languages we want. So this algorithm has a specific name called linear search. Okay? So what does linear search do? It takes as input, so we have input colon, an array of n numbers, all of each of which is an integer, and an additional integer x, okay? So we have an array, the array is called A. 
The array is indexed from 0 to n minus 1. So we have an element in a0, an element in a1, an element in a2, an element in a of n minus 1, which basically means that this is an array of n elements. And we also, the, the, the user gives us another integer x. Output is the index of the first element of a that matches x or minus 1 if there are no matching elements. So if someone, for example, gives us as a the array that has five elements, 1, minus 1, 2, 2, 3, and x is 2, what do we want this algorithm to return? We want it to return the first, the index of the first element that equals x. This is the first element that equals x. We want it, we want the algorithm to return the index of that. The index of this element is 2, because this is indexed at 0, and the index here is 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So we want the algorithm to return the value 2. If we take x equal 4, since 4 is not in this array, we want the algorithm to return the value minus 1. This is what the algorithm is supposed to do. How does the algorithm work? It first initializes, so it, it uses or declares a, a variable i. It initializes its value to 0. This is on line 1 now. Okay. So line 1 is it's initializing this local variable i to 0. And then on line 2, what are we saying here? On line 2, we are saying that while i is smaller than n, so we want to start scanning the array from left to right, from position 0 all the way to position n minus 1. While we are still scanning the array, and the value that we are looking at, ai, is not equal to x, keep moving right, okay? So, for example, if I go back to this same array here, 1, minus 1, 2, 2, and 3, and suppose x is 2. So first I initialize, I'm still looking at line 2 in the algorithm, I initialize i equals 0. I say, is and remember that n in this case is 5, okay? So if I evaluate this proposition here now, for i is 0, n equals 5, ai is 1, x is 2, okay? So here in this case, for the first time I encounter line 2, we have i equals 0, and we have n equals 5. We have ai equal 1, and we have x equal 2. So we say, well, while this condition, while this proposition is true, just increment i, add, add 1 to it. So if we look at this, is i smaller than n? Yes. Is ai not equal to x? Yes. Therefore, we increment i. So i now becomes 1. So now we ask, is 1 smaller than n? Yes. Is a of 1 not equal to x? Yes. We increment i again. This is on line 3, we increment i. So we go here, i equals 2. Now we say, is 2, i equal 2, is that smaller than n? Yes. Is a of 2 not equal to x? No. So this proposition now is false. This loop exists. Now it does not increment i. Now we come to line 4, and we say, okay, i is 2, n is 5. If i is greater than 5, uh, greater than or equal to 5, return minus 1. This here, these two lines, what do they correspond to? These correspond to the case where we kept incrementing i, which means we kept not finding the element x, and then at some point, we basically finish the array. So these two lines, 4 and 5, correspond to the case where x is not in the array. At this point, we return the value of i. So for this specific array here on the right, 1, minus 1, 2, 2, 3, i, it will return the value i equal 2. So this is a description of linear search in what we call pseudocode. There is no right and wrong pseudocode. Again, because it's not a formal language. If we formalize it, it becomes a programming language. It's somewhere between English and actual code. Like, for example, line 1, where we say i left arrow 0, one could have said let i equal 0, or assign 0 to i. All of these are fine, okay? There is nothing specific about the symbols we use. So linear search, again, it starts with the array from position 0, starts scanning it all the way to the right. If it finds a, an i such that a of i equals x, it returns that i. If it finishes scanning the array without finding the element, 
it exits with i equal minus 1. Here is a different, uh, another example of an algorithm. This is called matrix multiplication. And I would imagine that the name of the algorithm indicates what it's going to do. It's going to multiply two matrices. Okay. So the input are two matrices. The first one is an N by K matrix. So we have matrix N, A, sorry, matrix A that has N rows and K columns. And then we have matrix B that has K rows, sorry, it has k rows and m columns. When we multiply two matrices by each other, if we want to multiply these two matrices, the number of columns in the first has to equal the number of rows in the second. Because how do we multiply two matrices? If I want to multiply this and it has n rows and k columns times this has k rows and m columns, this gives me a new matrix here. So what is the va the value of this matrix at entry i, at row i and column j? We take the row i from here, this is row i, and we take column j from here, and we multiply them. So we take the first element, we take the first element in row i, multiply it by the first element in column j, plus the second element in row i times the second element in column j, plus the third element in row i times the third element in column j and so on all the way to the kth element in row i times the kth element in row j this is why the number of columns in a must be equal to the number of the number of columns in a must be equal to the number of rows in j so if this if we have a matrix c that is the product of these two this matrix will have n rows and m columns and if I want to write mathematically, what is the value again at entry i, j, and c? It is, we, as I said, we take, we take the i throw in, in a, and we take k from 1. No, sorry, we shouldn't take k here. We take l. We take l from l1. To k, a i l times b l j. This is what the 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 formula for matrix multiplication is. So the i the entry in c in the in row i column j, we multiply the i the i throw of a by the jth column in in b. And the the algorithm is written again as follows. The input are two matrices a and b. And the output is the product of A and B, C. And how do we compute this? Again, we have three, what we call three nested loops. So the first one on line, on line one, it is going through the, the rows of, of, of C. And this column, this, uh, this loop here is going through the columns of C. So this on line one is going to fill the rows of C. This one is going to fill the columns of C. This is why if you look at them here, this is I, this is J, and you will notice that we are indexing C by I and J. Okay, so what is this here on line 5? If you look at line 5, what this is saying is that this is implementing what I just wrote here. That line 5 saying that Cij, that this entry Ij in, in matrix C, is that let's look at the first, at the, the ith, that the ith row in, in A, multiply it by the jth column in B, and we just add all these numbers. Okay, so this is what the what this algorithm is doing. It's going saying, let me fill all the rows in C, all the columns in C, for every entry, for entry Ij, let me go through all the elements in row I in matrix A. Let me go through all the elements in column J in B and multiply them in a corresponding way. So the first by the first, second times the second, and so on. And then at the end on line six, we return the matrix. Okay, This is again another ex the description of an algorithm that's written in pseudocode. The algorithm has a proper name. 
the input and output are carefully described. So we understand what the input should be. We understand what the output should be. And it has a finite description. And this algorithm is finite because n is a number, m is a number, k is a number. So each one of these loops, we know how many times it's going to be iterating. And none of the commands or none of the lines here are ambiguous, right? So we know each one of these lines, what they are supposed to do. So this is a, an algorithm written in pseudocode for matrix multiplication.